a lot of my work um, are progressions. In this instance, it's a sort of bifurcating and trifurcating system, which keeps on dividing and dividing and dividing as it extends. It's quite reminiscent of very various things that occur in nature, from from the most obvious would be a tree, but to to uh, neural pathways, to ice crystals, and all sorts of. So it's meant to sort of oscillate between different interpretations, but it's a very geometric, rule-based structure. There's a lot of very ancient studies and use and, and exploitation of things like the Fibonacci sequence and old ancient truths really that exist in terms of ratio and proportion. We wanted to sort of challenge ourselves and kind of come up with a really novel way of making this. So there's no welding at all. It's all made from water cut aluminium sheets. So it's really like a piece of Japanese furniture which has no screws or no glue. It just uses this very um, intricate system of interlocking parts. The anodizing is a process which sort of um, uh, unifies the surface but also stabilizes it so you don't get um, oxidation and sort of pitting or marking on the surface, so it should allow the piece to be very resilient for, for a number of years. It's quite a kind of mystic art anodizing and it's very susceptible to the impurities in the material. We're trying to get this universal um, colour to go from the very thickest material to the very thinnest. So the real challenge now is being able to get this consistency of, of colour throughout the, throughout the form. The process itself etches away the surface by removing 25 microns, which is about a fifth of the thickness of the human hair. On this particular project, there's a special colour where we have some bronze coloration and some blue coloration to give the desired finish. I actually find it all really interesting because the anodizing process needs every element to work correctly to give a good result at the end. So everything from the guy putting the right parts on the right jig in the right way to finishing and measuring it at the end. But I guess the most dramatic change is when we change the colour from the silver of the metal to the coloured finish that the client's ordered. And you'll see that in the bicamera project. It changes from silver to bronze and then to the blue finished colour. And to be honest, these are the largest part that we've ever anodised in this company in the last 10 years. I hope that it will become a, a focal point and a sort of a, a marker and a, a sort of flag, a place to gather, a place of contemplation, conversation. I hope it's a, a very democratic object that um, acts as a beacon for everyone. Oh, what a world of unseen visions and heard silences, this insubstantial country of the mind. What ineffable essences, these touchless rememberings and unshowable reveries, and the privacy of it all, a secret theatre of speechless monologue and prevalent counsel, an invisible mansion of all moods, musings and mysteries, an infinite resort of disappointments and discoveries, a whole kingdom where each of us reigns reclusively alone, questioning what we will, commanding what we can, a hidden hermitage where we may study out the troubled book of what we have done and yet may do. An intracosm that is more myself than anything I can find in the mirror. This consciousness that is myself of selves, that is everything and yet of nothing at all. And what is it and where did it come from and why?